We are less than a month away from the release of the new, highly anticipated flight simulator and I have noticed lots of people planning on buying a new PC or upgrading their actual PCs, getting ready for this very special release. Let me start this up with a recommendation. If you're going to buy a new PC, uh, build your own PC. A PC build project can be so much fun and can offer great value for your money, upgrading in the future is easy and cost effective. And if your bank account is not ready for the PC of your dreams, you can start buying PC parts little by little and end up in the long run with the PC of your dreams. That is actually the way I built my first computer. First I started with an expensive stuff like the case, the power supply, maybe a hard drive. Next month when the paycheck came in I got the motherboard and some RAM sticks. Kept going like that for a couple of months and before I even realized I was buying the last piece of the puzzle and ended up with my dream PC I most definitely was not going to be able to afford on a single strike. I've got to admit, the downside of all of this is that it kind of became an addiction for me. I now have over 50 PC builds under my belt, I used to build PCs for where I used to work, I, I mean, that was not my job, they just knew that I really enjoyed building PCs, so I was tasked with building some PCs for the office. I also built a lot of PCs for my friends, for myself, and I also been doing many repairs and upgrades. So I ended up with a lot of PC parts that I pile up and then bring new PCs to life from all of those PC parts that are laying around. Uh, yeah, I'm surrounded by working PCs, incomplete PCs, PC parts, it's, it's actually amazing. My wife thinks otherwise, but she's missing in all the fun. Anyway, let's get back on track. Building a PC is awesome. Some people do seem to be scared of building their own PC. One of the main concerns is messing up so badly that the PC will actually catch in fire. Uh, so the question is, can things go wrong and end up ruining everything? And to that I say, well, when you go fill up gas on your vehicle, can't things go wrong? Like, super wrong? Well, yes, of course, but as long as you are sensible and follow very simple steps, everything is gonna be okay. This is no harder than building a Lego kit. And there is so much content out there to help you out on this first build of yours. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can even buy the PC Building Simulator game on Steam and get comfortable with the building process. But this video is not about how to build a PC. This is about what parts you should get if you are building a PC, specifically for running the flight simulator. So let's jump into it. Let's bring up the flight simulator PC spec sheet. We are shown three levels of builds. Minimum, Recommended and Ideal. Each level has two variants, one being AMD and the other being Nvidia and Intel. I am going to go over to PC Part Picker and make three builds I would build for myself for each of these levels. Now these are the ones I would build based on my experience building PCs, flying simulators and editing video. The guy next to me can have a completely different recommendation and that is okay. Just to let you know, links to the PC builds are on this video's description. Also, if you are enjoying this content, be sure to leave a like and maybe a subscription. That would be nice. Moving on. For these builds, I am choosing the Thermaltake Core V21 Micro ATX Mini Tower Case. I really like the design, the small footprint and how easy it is to work with it when building your machine. So the three levels will be considered to fit there. Let's commence with the minimum specs. I like starting off with the motherboard, I am choosing a AM4 socket because I am really loving the price, value and performance we are getting with the Ryzen. As we want to keep a low budget, I am choosing the B450 chipset, this leads me to choose a ASRock B450M Pro 4 Micro ATX AM4 motherboard, priced at around 80 US dollars. Now it's time to slap a processor into that motherboard. B450 chipsets were not compatible with Ryzen 3rd gen out of the box. Motherboards with this chipset had to be updated for compatibility. Thankfully, the manufacturer of this motherboard claims it is compatible with the Ryzen 3rd generation out of the box. So this is a no-brainer, let's get ourselves a 3rd gen Ryzen. I am choosing a Ryzen 3, again because I want to keep the prices low, and I am choosing the 3200G running at 99 US dollars. This Ryzen is a APU, this basically means that it is a processor and a graphics card in one, and this is actually something really cool for three things in particular. 
Number one, troubleshooting a PC that has integrated graphics can make life so much easier in many, many cases. Number two, if you are building the PC and decide that you are going to wait on the graphics card, uh, so maybe you can save up a little bit more money to upgrade it, or if it's just really expensive and you want to leave it till last, well, your PC will be usable without that graphics card, all thanks to the APU. You will be surprised by the many games you will be able to play with decent graphics and a decent frame rate without a GPU. Just search for the processor on YouTube, it's, it's quite surprising. Yes, I do not recommend that APU to run Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I think you guys get the idea. Number three, if something happens to your graphics card, your GPU, you are not completely out of the race. Also, the 3200G has an amazing price and pretty good performance. Let's now add the last thing that directly sticks into the motherboard, that would be the RAM memory sticks. Microsoft says 8 gigs is enough, but here is where you should really not settle. Go for 16 gigs. It is the most cost effective upgrade in the PC in my opinion. Just go and do 16 gigs. We need DDR4 memory, let's not go lower than a 3000 frequency, so I am adding the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16GB 2 stick of 8 DDR4 3000 memory for around 70 US dollars. Let's now add a hard drive, we need at least 150 gigs of available space. In simulators, fast drives are a must, so let's not settle for anything less than a SSD. Let's grab a Kingston A400, this one is a 480 gig SSD for around uh, 50 US dollars. Let's now throw in a XFX RX 570 4 gig video card. It does take the minimum requirement, even doubles on VRAM, and it's newer and better than the 770, and has a very good price tag, around 130 US dollars. We need to supply all of this with power, and we don't need more than 500 watts, so let's go for a EVGA BR 500 watt 80 plus bronze power supply setting us back 70 US dollars. And we're done! We got a pretty decent 600 US dollar machine! Ha! Ah, just kidding! You also need Windows 10, so add another 100 dollars there. Still for a 700 US dollar machine, it is quite brilliant. Let's waste no time and do my Fly Simulator recommended build now, and let's try to keep the price low. Let's not go over 1000 US dollars. We'll be using the same case, same motherboard, same SSD, same RAM, same power supply, and same Windows. But let's spice it up by upgrading the CPU and the GPU. The CPU I am choosing is no longer a APU. This means if you don't have a graphics card, you can't use your PC. But it is worth in the pursuit for performance. This time we are getting a Ryzen 5, the 3600. This processor is running at the same frequency but now has 6 cores instead of 4, and these cores have 2 threads each instead of 1. So we tripled the number of threads comparing to the other processor. We went from 4 threads all the way to 12. Yes, I know what many of you are thinking. Games and simulators are more interested in single thread performance than multi-thread. But things are slightly shifting with time. And if you plan on multitasking on your PC, maybe you do some streaming or some video editing, those extra threads will make a huge difference. Also, I can't confirm this as of yet, but my money is that the new simulator will make a better use of multi-threads in comparison with its competition. One of my computers is actually running the 3600, and I gotta say, it is a great processor. This processor will be setting you back about 170 US dollars. Now let's throw in a new GPU, I'm going for the MSI GeForce RTX 2060 6GB VRAM video card, standing at around 360 US dollars. This is the bare minimum I would recommend to whoever is looking for an amazing graphical experience. If you can jump towards the 2060 Super, even better. Of course, if you can go higher, well, even better. <laughs> but if you can't or don't want to, the 2060 should serve you right. It is worth mentioning that 3000 series would be arriving later this year, so if you are not in a hurry, it may be a good idea to wait. Alright, so we got a really nice machine going on for under $1,000. Let's now go for a build that is meant for people that are willing to spend over $2,000 US and want to crank everything to high on the graphical settings of the simulator. This is not a build to just burn money away, this build will still aim at having a decent benefit cost ratio, while being able to pump everything to max without worrying. We got the same case, same windows, 
but everything else changes. I am placing here a Asus Primer Z490M Plus Micro ATX LGA 1200 motherboard, which stands at around 150 US dollars. As you may or may not have noticed, we are switching to Intel on the processor because of the chipset, obviously. Why Intel on the high end? Well, two reasons really. One, Intel has a better single core performance, and number two, the stability on Intel is just better. The third generation of Ryzen really improved on stability, but Intel has that stuff really locked down. I am not saying Ryzen is unstable, but if you were to compare them, Intel wins on stability. And if you are going to be investing serious money on your machine, a small increase in stability is worth it. So what processor are we throwing into the PC? A beautiful 10900K of course, setting you back 530 US dollars. Of course we need to pair this processor with a Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 cooler, so add 90 US dollars to that processor purchase. Now let's get some memory on this bad boy. 32 gigs of RAM should do the trick. Let's get the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, two sticks of 16 gigs each, a DDR4 3200 memory for only 160 US dollars. We are also getting a SSD, but let's get a 1 terabyte Samsung 860 Evo for around 130 US dollars. Not because the simulator needs the space, but because having free space always ends up in having a better experience with your PC. Let's now add the graphics card. We are going here for the Asus GeForce RTX 2080 Super with 8 gigs of VRAM and will set us back at around 800 US dollars. I am not going for the TI because it breaks the benefit cost ratio that I am aiming for, so Super ends up being super good. But, but, if I were considering buying the 2080 Super right now, I would probably better wait for the release of the 3000 series, or, well, maybe I could buy the 2080 Super and as soon as the 3000 series come, I would sell the 2080 at a loss, if money isn't really that big of an issue. Anyway, we also need to give sweet, sweet power to everything, so let's throw a EVGA Supernova G3 550 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply unit. Not only it is great to have a fully modular PSU, but also I think it is worth having a more efficient one if we are paying the big bucks. And there we have it. These are the three machines I would recommend for the next fly simulator, standing at 700, 1000 and over 2000 price tags. I hope this video was useful and or entertaining to you. Do remember to like if so, and if you are not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon to stay up to date with news and very interesting videos. Want to send out special thanks to my Patreons, Punda, Lover Vegeta, Eastern Hops, Devin Cotting, Ron Miller and Flaming Dedrickson. Also, I would like to send out special thanks to my friend Shane from the Oz Flight Simmer channel for putting me in in his community spotlight segment. Truly appreciate it, my brother. And want to take the opportunity to also mention he is making some great content regarding the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. He's got some really interesting videos and he is covering the news as well. I'm sure you guys will really like what he's throwing at us. So do go and check him out and do say hi to him from me. Anyway, that is all from me for today. Thank you very much for sticking around. Happy flying, stay safe, cross check out. <laughs>